Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. Starting off with the uh, satellite imagery, we'll see the uh, band of clouds that was uh, over the northern southeast coast and to still there earlier today. Uh, moved, pulled back to the west with the main rain area sending up over Yakutat uh, this afternoon. They're still carrying moderate rain and uh, temperatures in the upper 40s though but really just a few scattered showers left here over the northern areas. Down to the southeast, lost sunshine temperatures pushed up towards 70 degrees this afternoon. You can see a lot of sunshine also across southern Alaska, right up to the Seward Peninsula. This band uh, lifting northward, a few isolated showers with it, but nothing too significant up in that area. Although the uh, winds did kick up to the 30, 35 miles an hour at, the, at Delta during the day today. And then this storm system down south of the Alaska Peninsula, that's the one that brought the gales and gusts to 50 miles per hour to areas there. And of course, all the rain, which is continuing in through this afternoon, nearly half an inch falling at Cold Bay in the last 24 hours. With uh, wind gusts uh, north-northeast, 15 to 30, 35 miles an hour, with some cases gusts up toward 50 miles an hour uh, along the peninsula, and especially in the Dutch Harbor area, more northerly there and drier. And those all winds trending down this afternoon as this low center slowly pulls southward. Otherwise, uh, just some variable clouds here over Bristol Bay and then sunshine farther to the north. Sunshine over the Pribilof Islands today. St. Paul had a record high of, uh, I think it was 54 degrees, breaking the old record of 53, set back in uh, 1965, way back in 1965. And uh, Annette, actually Annette had this record high also of 69, which is set in 1965. That record at St. Paul uh, went back to 1977. Out to the west, a uh, lot of clouds out there, but uh, all that streaming northward over high pressure over the Bering Sea and then coming back in more of a west-northwest flow with the Arctic jet up to the north there. But not too bad, high pressure in over the area today sliding eastward. Light variable winds on the eastern Arctic coast. Another system coming out of the Russian Far East here already picking the winds up. Uh, Point Hope at 4 o'clock had gusts to 35 miles an hour. And uh, this afternoon, so those winds uh, expected to go up to 30 knots here. And then gale force winds coming into the area tomorrow, uh, mostly uh, on the uh, western capes there. And then gales forecast for tomorrow on the eastern Arctic coast. Everywhere else expecting small craft advisories. And then these gale force winds uh, continuing through tonight here along the Pacific side of the peninsula in eastern Aleutians, uh, dropping back to small craft advisories for the uh, eastern Aleutians. And then for the, uh, uh, let's see, this area of cloudiness slowly dissipating and will be lifting northwards. So look for those showers to taper off there over the eastern Aleutians tonight. This trough uh, right in this area associated with the clouds and the showers, again, not much going on back up to the northwest there. Uh, variable clouds, high pressure moving eastward, so the uh, gradient there already allowing the, or be strengthening enough as this system approaches, bringing the, uh, what appears to be small craft advisors already into the uh, northwest areas here. Lots of sunshine again, that northeast flow pulling the dry air, VFR all the way out across the Pribilofs down into the Aleutians today, with the uh, rain continuing pretty, pretty steady here. Kodiak, well, actually southwest of Kodiak, mostly in the clouds there. The state airport had northeast winds gusting to 25 this afternoon, but 
No rain, that's all appeared to be down southwest of the island and then on out uh, toward the low center. Again, that's uh, slowly shifting southward. We'll see uh, tonight more of an eastward than southward pull to it. So that'll circulate more rain, uh, steady rain covering much of the island tonight and then also rain beginning to uh, push into the southeast coast there late tonight and uh, also up along the North Gulf Coast, uh, some leftover moisture. So as this comes up, it'll kind of uh, merge up with whatever is left over here with this trough scattered showers. Uh, fair skies here uh, across all of the interior. Watch for the clouds to increase here. This front slowly edging northward again, sliding up to the northeast, but the entire pattern shifting eastward here. Uh, high pressure slipping off toward Banks Island but still uh, a gradient developing here, keeping it uh, pretty gusty there. And again, the gales coming in, uh, rain and wind out over the far western Aleutians with that front, but high pressure holding over the southeast bearing or the southern bearing areas. And then for tomorrow, you see that uh, frontal system, again, most of the push off to the northeast, but the whole thing starting to push eastward there. So again, the gale force winds, uh, small craft advisories here for the Chuck C.C. Kotzebue Sound, and then gale force winds on up on the west side of the Arctic coast there with rain and snow. The polar outbreaking here occurring over the Russian Far East ahead of the front, warm air pushing northward. So uh, shouldn't be much in the way of any snow tomorrow here along the Arctic coast. So you with this front uh, shouldn't be, the precipitation shouldn't be all that heavy regardless. Uh, high pressure holding right over the Perb Locks. Looks like another nice day there. And then uh, looks like uh, rain likely here across all of the southeast coast. Now wind stuff beginning to pick up a little bit. Can pick up as high as 25, 30 knots there as this low center approaches the area. And then uh, also picking up the winds. Uh, small craft advisors here along the north Gulf Coast with rain pushing northward. Scattered showers possibly developing there over the Wrangell Mountains again in the Kenai Peninsula. And some of this rain may slip on up into Prince William Sound, uh, which uh, could produce some areas of marginal to IFR conditions. That'd be mainly on the west side of Prince William Sound, lowest flying conditions staying along and off the coast. But VFR here with north to northeast winds for Bristol Bay. Uh, still kind of breezy here across the Alaska Peninsula, but not quite as windy as what you saw today. But still the difference between the higher pressure over the Perblops, the pressure difference in this low will keep it uh, pretty brisk tomorrow, but dry. And then the uh, front will push eastward tomorrow night and Sunday will uh, edge its way southward. And the colder air coming back in from the northwest there uh, should change the uh, rain over to rain and snow along in advance of the front to uh, snow showers back to the west. Another trough uh, bringing uh, some more snow and gusty winds along with probably some IFR into the western Arctic coast, possibly spreading down in toward the Bering Strait or the north side of the Seward Peninsula. But uh, to the south and east, uh, look for a sunny day on Sunday. Kodiak Island, northwest wind, sunshine, right up into south central Alaska and across the upper Yukon Valley to the eastern Arctic coast. A uh, little more in the way of some clouds and scattered isolated showers. They'll be mostly over the Wrangell Mountains or off into Canada. Still some scattered showers along the north or the eastern North Gulf Coast. And the uh, rain will become more of a showery type uh, condition on late Saturday and Sunday. Then a narrow band of rain with this front will begin showing up along the coast, probably in the afternoon hours. But uh, pretty nice high pressure covering the northern Bering Sea. This system down to the south, the front stalled out right along or just south of the Aleutians there for periods of rain. And uh, looks like uh, maybe gale force winds possible on the Pacific side of the central Aleutian zones. We'll look at that later. Small craft advisories, much lighter winds over the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. Patchy fog possible uh, anywhere along the Aleutians of the Bering Sea, but nothing too widespread. Still pretty fair out there. And then temperatures this afternoon, warm spot in the state today was 70 degrees at Klawak with the uh, sunshine. There's a Heidelberg at 64, otherwise up to the north, lower to mid 50s with uh, 47 here at uh, Elfin Cove, Cape Spencer at northeast winds there gusting to 35 miles an hour, 48 in rain at uh, Yakutat, moderate rain, 57 Skagway and a 52 over at Juneau. 60 degrees in Cordova, 52 Seward, 48 at Golcana, and a 47 up here at uh, Delta, while the uh, Northway had 44 degrees, even though it's missing. 10 degrees warmer over at Fairbanks, 
missing off the map. And uh, 43 at Fort Yukon, same thing at Bedell. It's only 30 degrees at Anatovic Pass there and 36 at Arctic Village. 29 at Barrow with a 30 degree reading at Atchisook. 32 dead horse, a tad warmer over at uh, Kaktovik. 42 Cape Lisbon, same thing at Kivalina. And a 43 at Ambler with uh, 39 Shishmaref, but Nome up to 46. 40s here, central, southwest areas, 52 at Macoriac, 50 degrees at Gamble. Aleutians, about the same. There's that record 54 at St. Paul, also 54 at Adak and Atka. A little cooler at Chimia, near 50 here for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. You get in some more sunshine, temperatures pushed up towards 60 near King Salmon. Lows tonight, uh, mid 20s. Arctic coast to uh, teens through the Brooks Range portions of the North Slope. Otherwise, a lot of 20s here through the interior. Right on down into uh, possibly the Susitna Valley and more likely the Copper River Basin. Lower 30s to mid 40s once you get out to the west there to the Bering Sea and 40 to 50 for the southeast coast. Warmer, lower 50s over the southern areas. Highs tomorrow uh, above freezing most areas, uh, partly the higher elevations of the Brooks Range. Otherwise, uh, lower to mid 30s to uh, upper 40s to lower 50s here over the southwest and about the same as today over the Aleutians. Otherwise, the southeast coast, again, 50s to near 60, and mostly in the uh, 50s here over southern Alaska. And moving on to the, uh, seem to have lost the advancer again, but uh, flying weather, great. Here, VFR, eastern and central Arctic coast, all the way down uh, into, uh, well, I'll call it the Barren Islands, possibly here, but this uh, area will be pulling uh, west, westward and northward, and again, some IFR could possibly slip up into the western Prince William Sound areas and look for occasional IFR east side of Kodiak Island and then along the frontal boundary there along the southeast coast with Marshall's VFR spreading up into the uh, northern panhandle and then out to the west here again with that system coming eastward. Look for conditions to uh, deteriorate throughout the day with IFR right down into St. Lawrence Island, and then marginal VFR back into another batch of IFR out over the western Aleutian. So moving on to the passes, Anatovic uh, VFR, I think, and really good as well. Lake Clark and Merrill, rainy VFR, and for uh, windy VFR conditions uh, tomorrow, Isabel VFR, Mentasta VFR, and for Tanita, looking good. Portage, though, starting out VFR and then gradually becoming uh, marginal VFR in the afternoon to possibly IFR in the eastern entrance late in the day. And then for Chilkoot and White, uh, marginal VFR gradually possibly becoming IFR at times later in the afternoon. Freezing levels, uh, 2,000 feet here over the eastern Tanana Valley near Toke, up to 8,000 feet over the southern southeast coast. And uh, at the surface, these are for tomorrow morning. And then you can see the uh, warm push of air up to the northeast ahead of that next system coming out of the Russian Far East, followed by colder air, which will be sweeping into the northwest areas late Saturday and Sunday. And for icing, uh, look for mostly below 10,000 feet here as that system pulls into the northwest. But uh, all the significant icing will be back to the west until later on tomorrow night. And then uh, quite an area here in that four to 6,000 foot range and above. Uh, along the North Gulf Coast and all of the panhandle of the, uh, could be some isolated areas of moderate rime icing in that zone, but uh, the only other area way out over the western Aleutians. And the winds aloft showing for tomorrow, upper level low pressure now southeast of Kodiak Island. You see some ridging here over the Bering Sea. The Arctic jet uh, up north of the area there as this system pulls eastward, and then it'll begin to slip on down to the southeast, ridging off the uh, west coast and uh, low pressure pushing into the southwest Aleutians. Pizza delivery, huh? <laughs> For the uh, 9,000 foot winds uh, south, 35 to 40 knots along the Panhandle, taking a turn to uh, what would be easterly along the North Gulf Coast, northwest 35 knots, as high as 40 knots coming across the Alaska Peninsula with uh, 25 knot winds and all that dropping off as you get over the high center ridge. And then this uh, area of uh, wind coming eastward, 35 knots there to the uh, Point Hope Cape Lisbon area and southerlies at about 40 knots coming into the western Aleutians. 3,000 feet, looks like this, uh, pretty light and variable here over the eastern interior. Picking up from the northeast, 10 to 25 knots over the Alaska range and then down on the Gulf of Alaska with this system. Uh, 
30 to 40 knots along and off the coast to 40 to 45 knots northerly across Kodiak, even 25 knots here up uh, into the uh, Cook Inlet area, otherwise 20 knots southeast bearing Bristol Bay and then these southwesterlies up here uh, picking up along the northwest coast, about 20 to 25 with the system at 3,000 feet out to the west. Turbulence wise, uh, occasional moderate chop here, Kodiak Island, and then the mechanical turbulence, northwest wind, so kind of bumpy here right over the terrain, back down toward uh, Unalaska, light isolated moderate chop back to the northwest, and then this area pushing eastward with the gusty winds ahead of that system, also some turbulence out over the Aleutians, and again, the heavier stuff or bumpier stuff staying along and off the coast uh, all the way around to the Kenai Peninsula. And after hangar flying, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor. On behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, thank you to Alaska Public Media for sponsoring this program. We are glad you could join us this evening. We're happy to have Amy Moore back with us. She is going to talk a little bit about how she got to be an airline pilot. Welcome back, Amy. Mary, thank you. On our last show, we talked about how you got involved in aviation and some of the flying that you did in your early career. Mm -hmm. And you've worked for a couple airlines, but let's talk about your current job and how you got hired and about how the process went for you. So first you applied for the job, then you had the interview, and then you had a flight test? That's correct. Um, the interview process was a two stage. It was, or actually there's three stages. There's uh, the technical information, there is a human resources, and then there's also the uh, simulator flying. And so each of those, there was a little bit of preparation that went into each one. Um, the technical part was a lot of review, just the ATP written questions or instrument questions, knowing regulations, knowing some of the IFR uh, criteria. Um, the human resource questions um, were a lot more of a thought process on how to answer, how to present yourself. Um, information that you want the airline to know about you or your decision making because a huge part of the airline mentality, the corporate culture, is the safety. Can they trust you with their image, with their passengers? And so your decision making skills was pretty important. And then of course I uh, used the medallion simulator to sharpen my skills and make sure I was prepared for the uh, in simulator portion of the interview. Great. I always encourage people to use the Medallion Foundation simulators, and this is a perfect opportunity for somebody that maybe doesn't fly instrument conditions and knows that they need to prep themselves in order to take a flight test on a simulator for an airline interview. Absolutely. Really, really recommend it, and the, the equipment there is just outstanding and very versatile, and, and it was, I felt very well prepared being able to use it, and it was a tremendous asset. Good. So. Initially, where did you see the job advertised and how did you go about applying for the job? This is actually the second regional carrier I've had the privilege to work for. And uh, it's one of the binds where just kind of a little bit of networking, knowing who's hiring, um, knowing a little bit about the corporate culture or each airline, the equipment that they have, where their pilot bases are. Um, some of the decision making I think anyone has to go through is are they willing to commute, where do they want to be based, what kind of equipment do they want, and then other questions are related to what being with that company is like, how long till you can be captain, what kind of equipment are they flying. So all of that went into the process of deciding who to apply with and um, where to pursue employment. So. When you did the interview, were you able to do that in Alaska or did you have to go out of state to do that? I was out of state for the interview. So then you do the interview and they say, okay, we like you, now let's see how you can fly? It was all one day. Um, the, um, the application the, was online and then there was a phone interview that was, we we're pretty interested in you if this is really who you are and what you say, and then they line up the interview over the phone, 
um, and I was actually offered positive space travel to the interview, which was very much appreciated. Um, and then through the day, as I say, there's about three interview processes, you, um, the technical and the, the HR, the, yeah, technical HR and, mm -hmm. and the simulator, they fit it all into the same day and then fly back that evening. And at the time you come back, do you know whether you have the job or not? I was offered a class date at the interview. Everybody I've talked with, it's been a different experience. Some of them, when they have classes that they know they need to fill, um, they offer a date, um, gave you some materials and say, look this over and come to class prepared knowing all these things. And other ones, yeah, we'll be in touch. And so I had the comfort of a successful interview and a class date and about three weeks to prepare before I was uh, in class. Well, I'm sure you were impressive as a candidate, so they probably wanted to hire you right away. Be generous. <laughs> So do you have any advice that you would give to someone that was looking at a career as an airline pilot? It's a long road. It's not something that happens quickly. Um, be willing to ride out the highs and the lows. Um, right now the industry is kind of gearing up for a frenzy. There's going to be a lot of hiring going on both at the regional and at the majors. Um, I have been furloughed twice, so that was kind of the low. And um, it doesn't happen immediately but it is doable, it's manageable, it's exciting, it's a very fun way to go to work, and when you enjoy work, it's, it, it's really a great career. Well, thank you, and congratulations on the job. We look forward to having you back on the show, and especially after you've become captain, and you can tell us what it takes to succeed there. Oh, Mary, you're generous, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Folks, thank you for tuning in tonight. We encourage you to become members of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. Membership forms are found online at our website, www.aasfonline.org. Until next time, thanks for your support and fly safely. Thank you, Amy. Welcome back. Well, from the uh, southeast coast, uh, Mostly easterly to northeasterly, on the light side, 10 to 15 knots, but carrying the small craft advisories here, especially along the south coast, but even the north coast there could see east or southeast, 20 to 25 knots. And then for Sunday, uh, lighter winds now, south to southeast, 15 to 20 knots, becoming more easterly on the north side, and then pretty light winds here, south to southeast at about 10 on the inside waters. For Prince William Sound, northeast 20 tomorrow. In fact, those northeasterlies uh, picking up to 30 knots here for the Barren Islands and small craft advisories all along the North Gulf Coast down to Kodiak Island. Coming down to 20 knots, uh, those gales through tonight here for Shelikoff Strait and then dropping off tomorrow. 15, southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, maybe 20 knots there through the forelands of Cook Inlet and then lighter to the north. And then for Sunday, uh, all northwesterly, and uh, could be some gales here through across the Barren Islands at times, but 30 knots should cover it pretty good. 20 to 25 knots here coming across Kodiak Island, strongest on the east side, 15 for the North Gulf Coast. Uh, that should have had a north or northwest uh, arrow there. And Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, north of 20. For Bristol Bay, north 20 knots, and that pattern uh, pretty much uh, consistent right on down the coastline there. Small craft advisories, uh, 25 to 30 knots here from uh, Cape Sarachef on up to Sitka, or Sitka, uh, Sitkanak. And then for uh, Sunday, northwest 15 for Bristol Bay. Pretty light winds now, higher pressure uh, coming in and less gradient, so 15 knots on the Pacific side. Still holding on to the small craft advisories through much of the day here, southwest of Sitkanak. And then for the uh, Western Aleutians, uh, east winds 25 knots, maybe up to 30 knots here for the west central zones, Adak and Atka, southeast 20, and uh, continued light winds for the Fox Islands, 10 to 15 knots, or becoming light, lighter here uh, for the uh, Fox Islands tomorrow. And then for Sunday, uh, swinging around to the east or southeast, 10 knots here for uh, on Alaska Island. Then easterly for Nikolsky on over to Adak out of the east, picking up to possibly 35 knots here in that southern zone. Northeast 20 to 25 out to the west. For the southwest coast, uh, northwest here at 10. And then looks like 20 knot winds in this zone. 
Kerbalos light could see some sunshine again tomorrow. Southwesterlies on the increase here uh, west of St. Matthew Island on up across St. Lawrence Island. And then for uh, Sunday, it looks like uh, these winds will turn northwest and come down, could pick up uh, strongest tomorrow night and then turn northwest during the day Sunday, about 20 knots here, but northwesterly is 15 knots and uh, lighter winds as high pressure takes over the northern Bering Sea. And then up along the Arctic coast, uh, it's uh, looking like this tomorrow. Small craft advisories, Kotzebue Sound, gales here for this western zone. Small craft advisories, uh, strongest there in the central coast, southeast 30, and then gales here for the eastern area, uh, Kaktovik um, and that zone. And then for Sunday, uh, things will turn more west and northwest. Southwest here on the central and eastern coast. Southeast 35 for the uh, extreme east side here. And then northwest, possibly side 35 knots. Uh, and then, but coming down to 25 here for the western areas. Northwest also for Kotzebue Sound. And then tonight, uh, again, going through the last uh, three charts here, this storm pulling eastward, so uh, rain changing to showers. Winds coming down, diminishing, but they won't be ending at all with the uh, high holding out to the west and the gradient across the area. Fair skies, variable clouds, winds light here over the interior, all the way up to the Arctic coast there, but this system bringing the wind and eventually rain and snow in late tonight with gale force winds tomorrow. And then uh, rain spreading into the panhandle. Uh, again, these winds coming up to maybe 30 knots on the south coast with that system. Clouds increasing, but the rain holding along the coast. Chance of showers up to the north, nothing to the Alaska Range in north. This system pulling into the northwest with the gales, rain, and snow, followed by colder air back to the northwest for some snow showers on Sunday. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.